I was born in Kakadu. Dad was a buffalo and crocodile shooter. He came up in the late 1950s and basically established the station. As a boy, I grew up pretty hard. We used to go off with the women, gathering bush tucker. We ate basically everything, flying foxes, you name it, we ate it. So that gave us a huge understanding of Aboriginal culture. After I left school, I actually managed a station for a while and then went to the Kimberleys working on stations up there and then came back and joined Dad 28 years ago. The old man started the business up and then my wife and I took over in 99. After being in Africa so many times, I could see that it was a future in the, the high-end Australia and no one was doing it. Not just focusing on one, one topic, but giving an overall experience from birdings, being on the billabongs, air boating. So from the time we pick them up in Darwin until we drop them off, everything's exclusive. Each tour is completely different. Most of my tours now are up to averaging five days. So Kakadu is a World Heritage Area declared in 1983 for a number of reasons, for its historical value for Aboriginal heritage, but also for its landscape and the diversity of birds. So there's more than 375 species of bird that visit this area. Secondly, of course, we have uh, estuarine crocodiles. Nothing uncommon to see uh, 18, 20 footers now. People want to see crocodiles. It's probably the number one on their list, but they want to see them in the wild. If we're doing Kakadu, we'll always do a sunset trip at Yellow Waters, which is magnificent. We'll do another airboat on the on the Corroboree Billabong, and so it gives them the experience to see the birds. And there's lots of white-bellied seagulls there, all your herons, egrets, and your little kingfishers. Then we'll visit waterholes like Magook, Gunlom, Jim Jim. And my favourite is Coolpin Gorge. Then we go up to Davidson's, and up there again, the experience is about both species of crocodiles. Namaru is again different. With the airboats, you're out with the birds, experiencing the floodplains. So right now, we've got all the little goslings running around out there. Our company has access up into Megan Valley, where no one else is able to access. And the reason we've got that is because of me growing up with that particular Aboriginal family. It's an incredibly unique area. The views are just spectacular. It's one of those places that's quite spiritually moving because you know that no one else is tramping around or disturbing anything. So it's only you and your guests. So we get the opportunity to be able to go to the art center, into the community, do a, a hill walk for about four hours. We employ a, um, a local guide from the community and he'll do the hill walk. So the rock art in Injilak Hill, that rock art is just magnificent to, to look at. To actually experience that art and be there with an Aboriginal guide is, is something quite moving because you're actually living the past. You're actually getting there and you're living what the Aboriginals did for thousands of years and why they painted on the rock for a few reasons, to display what was available in the area and then teach the kids. We had books that we read to our kids. Well, they had paintings that they taught their kids. It's just an amazing experience to be there, even for me after all these years, to sit up in the hill and just overlook the floodplains and, and really understand why Aboriginal people appreciate their country or love their country. For me, it's, it's a great privilege because it, without that working relationship over basically 60 years, I wouldn't have the able to access to those areas that, that they've given to me. The thing that I like doing is explaining to the younger generation, get out of the city, enjoy the time in the bush. Aboriginal people have been hunting for tens of thousands of years and they understand the land and the land's important to them. You take care of the bush, it eventually will take care of you. If you destroy it, you lose your wildlife, you lose what's in the ground, you lose the feeling. But what I want to leave is each client that comes on tour with me is that they leave with a different understanding not just about the ecosystem but about Aboriginal culture and why it's so important to protect what we have in Australia because we can't go backwards we've got to go forward.